All right. Welcome, folks. I want to give an introduction to evasion paths and mobile sensor networks. So this is joint work with my PhD advisor, Gunnar Carlson, and um, you know, three or four videos from now. <laughs> I'll also mention some recently computed statistics with Deep Ghosh and Clark Mask and Will Ott and Kyle Williams from the University of Houston. All right. So um, pretend we have a ball-shaped domain. So, you know, um, you know, I, the, here the ball-shaped domain is given by uh, <laughs> these black edges forming a loop. So it's not strictly a ball, but it's a ball to a topologist. Okay. So we have a ball-shaped domain in Euclidean space of whatever dimension you want, but all of my pictures will be, you know, ball-shaped domain and domains in the plane. And we have moving sensors, as you can see here. So each black dot is a sensor center. And the blue ball is the region covered by that sensor. And these sensors are all allowed to move, wander, however they like, with the one condition that we have fixed sensors around the outside of our domain that don't move. So these are called the fence sensors, and they never move. And we have some time interval, and the sensors just wander as time varies. So this is going to be a minimal sensing problem. These sensors don't know their location. They don't have GPS coordinates. All they instead measure is this connectivity data. So think of sensors as you know walkie-talkies. And when the walkie-talkies are close enough, they can communicate. And so they just measure this edge. Yes, we can communicate. So. Whenever two sensors overlap, we have an edge between them. And when sensors don't overlap, um, we don't have an edge between them. We'll assume we can measure a little bit more. So we'll assume that, that the sensors can measure when there's points of triple intersection, at which point we glue, we glue in these red triangles. If you had the GPS coordinates, well, OK, let me describe the problem that we're trying to solve. We're trying to ask, is it possible for some intruder to remain in the unsensed region from start time zero all the way to end time one, okay? So in this demo, it's on a loop, but no matter where the intruder starts, no matter what uh, unseen white region the intruder starts in, the intruder is eventually gonna get seen by one of the sensors, okay? the GPS coordinates, you could just plot this picture and, and tell whether there's an evasion path or not. Can an intruder evade all these sensors? But is this possible if all you have is this connectivity data of the sensors? Now, in the static case, when the sensors weren't moving, we saw in the last video that you can solve this problem. In the static case, you're not asking for an evasion path that the intruder can walk along. You're just asking for a hole and the intruder can just stand in that hole. And you can look at one dimensional homology here to tell whether there's a hole or not that the intruder could, could stand in. It turns out that this problem gets a lot more subtle once the sensors are allowed to move, as we'll later see. So I won't dwell on this too much, but I've assumed that the sensors can measure points of triple intersection which is really unrealistic. In the real world, if you have radio towers or cell phones or walkie-talkies, they can measure if two of them can talk to each other, but they can't measure if there's a point in space that can talk to all three of them. So when you want to move to more realistic settings, you can do that. You, um, you get approximate results and you can get approximate results, you know, bounding things on either side, depending on how you set things up. I'll be drawing some pictures in space cross time. So space is this disk on the left and time is varying from left to right. So the gray region here is the region covered by the sensors. So over time, that, that region changes as the sensors move. And the white region is the region that's not covered by the sensors, okay? So X is our coverage region in space cross time. And then its complement is this white region not seen by the sensors. 
So what is an invasion path? It's a continuous map that moves from time zero to time one that's in the white region, never seen by the sensors. So an evasion path can't go backwards in time, right? So an evasion path always has to be moving forwards. So using this connectivity information, the time varying connectivity data or check complex, can we determine whether an evasion path exists or not? That's our challenge. In this example, no, there's definitely no evasion path because you can't teleport in space, right? Um, great. We make this a little bit more computational oftentimes by discretizing time. So cut time up into slices. And then if you have an edge at adjacent portions of time, you know, fill in that, that edge with a, a little prism, you know, a, a rectangle filling it in as time varies. And if you have a triangle that exists at adjacent points in time, fill it in with this red prism. Okay, so this is a way to do things in a computational way where you can cut up time. And so long as you divide time finely enough, you recognize every transition that you need. Okay, so in prior work, Vin De Silva and Robert Christ have shown that you can give a one-sided con condition, which sometimes allows you to guarantee that there's no evasion path, okay? So here's how they do it. You try to find a blue sheet alpha that sort of wraps around this cylinder that separates time zero on the left from time one on the right. And you want this blue sheet alpha to be in the region covered by the sensors, okay? So, you know, alpha is not in a single point of time, right? Time is varying from zero on the left to one at the right, one on the right. But if you can find this blue sheet alpha, which is in the covered region in space time, then certainly there's no evasion path. Just because any intruder that passes from time zero to time one would have to at some point pass through this blue sheet alpha, at which point it would be in the sensed region and get detected. So we can use this theorem to prove that there's no evasion path here, right? Draw this blue sheet alpha in the time varying covered region in gray. And we've separated time zero from time one. And that shows that any intruder is gonna have to at some point walk through this blue sheet alpha precisely when it's gonna get caught by uh, the sensors. All right, so we've proven that this um, sensor network here does not have an evasion path. All right. Surprisingly, ideas using the blue sheet alpha are not good enough to always decide if there's an evasion path or not. So I like to give this as an exercise for people. Can they think of a picture where you have a mobile sensor network where there's no evasion path, but you can't prove it using such a blue sheet alpha? Here it is, here's a picture. So pretend everything is covered by sensors in space cross time, except for this S-shaped curve. We can't find a blue sheet alpha in the covered region separating time zero from time one, right? So there's no blue sheet alpha we can find proving that there's no evasion path. But also there's no evasion path because any intruder has to move forward in time. So the intruder has to keep going forward in time here and then eventually get caught. The intruder can't start going backwards in time. You can't like press rewind on, on time and move backwards as you would need to do as an intruder to follow this S-shaped curve. So I was really happy when I heard about this problem from Rob Greist and Vin De Silva um, because it got me inspired to think about other things besides this uh, blue sheet alpha theorem as a way to try to guarantee not only a one-sided condition that can sometimes prove you don't have an evasion path, but I was interested to see, could we find an if and only if condition deciding whether an evasion path exists or not. All right, I will end this video there. Are there any public questions?
Thanks so much.